Welcome everyone to lesson eight of Exploring God's Word. Uh, this lesson title is called The Birth of the Church. We looked last week at the ministry of Jesus um, upon the earth and uh, the miracles and uh, his death, burial, and resurrection. So now we are moving into the birth of the church, the beginning of the church age. Uh, of course, we're moving out of the Gospels and into the book of Acts. Um, so as we dive into this one, um, we uh, uh, are, are instructed, or the uh, disciples were instructed before Jesus uh, ascended back into heaven. Uh, he actually told them uh, to, to wait, uh, to go to Jerusalem and wait. Uh, we find where Luke records this in two places at the end of his gospel of Luke and also in the first chapter of Acts. But Luke um, 24, 49, uh, Jesus says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tear ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Likewise, also in Acts chapter 1, uh, he uh, kind of rehearses this again. Uh, verse 8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So he tells them to go and to wait, uh, to wait for this, uh, the promise of the Holy Ghost, the wait of the promise of the Spirit of God dwelling with inside uh, of, of all of us, of uh, the people of God. And uh, But this, of course, had never happened up to this point, so they weren't really sure what to expect. Uh, but they, they obeyed the word of the Lord. They, they go to Jerusalem and to that upper room uh, where 120 of them, that's all that's left. They gather together uh, to wait upon uh, whatever this is that uh, they're supposed to be waiting upon. Um, they, like I said, they weren't sure what to expect. Um, but as they came together and waited there, um, of course, the the apostles were there, the uh, disciples, the the mother of Jesus, Mary, and others uh, were there in that upper room, and they they were all with one accord. The Bible tells us in chapter two. Um, they, in other words, they had the one mind, one heart, one purpose. They got their, everything together, focused upon God and upon receiving this promise, whatever it was. Uh, they knew that it. Uh, they were looking for something uh, spectacular, something supernatural, uh, because Jesus had told them, like I said, that they're going to receive power. Uh, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon them. They were, they were, uh, I'm sure, eager to get on with the Great Commission that Jesus had given them, you know, to teach and to preach the Word of God and make disciples throughout the entire world. So. There they were in that uh, upper room uh, getting uh, expectation um, and waiting for the promises of God. And uh, they, they uh, as they all come together, like I said, in one accord, then uh, the Holy Ghost falls upon them. Um, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So there is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost for the first time um, into people. And um, as they began to magnify and glorify God speaking in tongues. Um, of course, they, it, uh, it wasn't just a quiet event. I mean, there was 120 people speaking in tongues, glorifying God, magnifying Him, uh, causing a scene. Uh, so it gets the attention of people on the street. They began to gather around. Uh, some uh, are accusing uh, these that are in this upper room of being drunk. Uh, they, you know, they, they can't explain it, so they begin to mock and to accuse them. And that's when Peter stands up in verse 14, uh, and he says, You men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as you suppose, 
seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall, and then he quotes Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And then he continues to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified and, and explains how that they had crucified the Messiah that they had been promised and waited for for generations and centuries. And uh, when they realize uh, what they had happened in verse uh, 36 of Acts chapter 2, Peter's continuing to preach. Uh, and he says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Uh, and so, of course, this gets the attention. Uh, the Bible says that they were uh, pricked in their hearts. Conviction falls upon them. And so then they ask the question, uh, you know, men and brethren, what shall we do? What do we do now? Peter then explains to them in verse 38 of Acts chapter 2, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he continues by saying, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So he begins, uh, you know, to tell, uh, they ask what to do. So Peter tells them, you got to repent, got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. All of you, by the, by the, uh, you know, he says, every one of you have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. He says, and, and you will receive the gift, this promise of the Holy Ghost. It's unto you, it's to your children, it's to all that are far off, it's for everybody is what he was saying there in verse uh, 39. So this day of Pentecost, it was a Jewish holiday. Pentecost simply just means 50 days, uh, 50 Pente, uh, meaning uh, 50 days after the Passover. So there was a lot of people in Jerusalem. A lot of the Jews were there in Jerusalem celebrating this uh, festival. Uh, Jews from all over uh, the area, uh, you know, from nation different nations and all over the place that's why as they began uh, in that upper room to speak in tongues and magnifying god the bible says that uh, the people in the streets of jerusalem heard their their native tongue you know in other words so they weren't just speaking uh hebrew they were speaking you know languages that uh, people from other areas other nations would recognize the language that they were speaking so it wasn't just gibberish. They were actually speaking in tongues um, and glorifying God uh, in, in different languages. And so, of course, this gets the attention uh, of, of the, the people of Jerusalem. They gather together. Peter takes the opportunity to preach unto them. Uh, so, you know, if you recall, <clears throat> Jesus had given Peter the keys to the kingdom. And so Peter uses those keys to open up the gospel and begins to preach and tells people what they have to do uh, in order to, to receive this promise, in order to, um, you know, be in a saved condition. So Peter, of course, he not only preaches, he preaches with power, uh, again, because of the, the presence of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God dwelling with inside of him. He is, he, it's a fulfillment of what Jesus had promised that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. He preaches with authority uh, because of the word, because of the power. And he, you know, uh, brings to mind, you know, you know, scripture as the Holy Ghost will do, will give us unction as we're preaching and will bring things to our remembrance as we're testifying and telling people about Jesus. He, he, he says, hey, this is a fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel, how he's going to pour out the Lord's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. He said, this is that, that the prophet Joel talked about. So, you know, this is a uh, prophecy coming to pass right before your eyes. And of course, he goes on to tell how they had uh, crucified Jesus, the Messiah they had waited on. This, you know, of course, devastates them when they finally understand who Jesus was. And so they ask uh, again their question, what, what, what can we do now? What, you know, it's, we've already crucified him. He's dead, buried, ascended. You know, we don't know what to do. Peter tells them, hey, it's not hopeless. Uh, we can, you know, you can still make things right by repenting, uh, getting, uh, getting yourself right. In other words, uh, repentance is, um, 
you know, the Bible says, I think it's first Corinthians says that, um, you know, uh, godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation. In other words, so when you feel that conviction as they felt there on the day of Pentecost, you know, men and brethren, what shall we do? Their hearts were pricked. Uh, when you feel that conviction, that's that godly sorrow, you know, that's letting you know that, hey, you need to make a change in your life. And, you know, godly sorrow worketh repentance. In other words, it, it, it makes you uh, desire a change in your life. And that's what repentance is. It's, it's a turning about. It's a going the opposite direction of the way you've been living. Uh, you say you stop living for yourself. You start living for the Lord. Uh, and that's what repentance is. It's a change of direction. It's a change of life. And that godly sorrow will work repentance unto salvation. So once we get that repentance, we, we say, hey, uh, you know, I'm making a change, um, you know, and John the Baptist uh, taught and preached repentance. And then, uh, you know, that's, that's how he were getting, was baptizing people into repentance. And so then Jesus comes along. First things that he taught was repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then, then Peter reinforces this, you know, in the day of Pentecost, repent, be baptized. Uh, and so, you know, we, we see uh, examples of people that don't repent. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, uh, is an example in the Old Testament of people that did not and would not repent, and so they were destroyed for their sin. Jonah preached uh, to the city, the great city of Nineveh, and they did repent and, uh, you know, received what uh, Jonah was preaching. And so, you know, we, we are uh, commanded uh, to repent, and that's really the, the first uh, step that we have to make in order to get ourselves where we need to be uh, with God. And because, you know, until we repent, you know, we're really not changing anything. And it takes repentance and it takes that unction, that godly sorrow to really make repentance work. Because if you're just doing it because you got caught or you're doing, you're, you're sorry because of, uh, any other reason other than you realize that you have hurt God, that you are sinning against God, when you realize that, you know, that will uh, encourage you, you know, to change your ways. And so we have repentance. We have, uh, Peter says, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Of course, baptize is, comes from the Greek word baptismo, which just simply means to be immersed. And uh, so we are to be baptized. Uh, uh, and, and we need to be immersed, completely covered in water, because baptism, according to the New Testament, is a symbolism of death. It's so we are buried with him. The Bible says in, in, in a couple of different places, buried with him in baptism. Uh, Romans, uh, oh, let me draw that up. Six and four, I believe it is. Uh, it says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as uh, Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So there we have a, an example how we are buried with him in baptism. So we have to be completely immersed, completely buried, you know, in that watery grave uh, for the remission, for the removal of our sins, uh, buried with him in baptism. Um, so we have to uh, uh not only be totally and completely immersed in water, but we have to call upon the name of Jesus Christ because bringing his name into the equation, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That brings his blood. Uh, and, and as we uh, say repeatedly, what, you know, the old hymn, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So we have to bring that blood that comes when we call upon his name the name of Jesus. Of course, it's the power is in that name also. Uh, but uh, Peter, and throughout the book of Acts, we see examples of how people are baptized in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, um, and but never are, is it recorded in the book of Acts or anywhere in scripture where somebody is buried uh, or is baptized by using the, the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But that is a, again, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ is a fulfillment of what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19. They are, they are baptizing in the name of the Father, 
of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. So they are, uh, it, it is a fulfillment of that scripture. And so once they are uh, repentant, you know, once we uh, baptize the name of Jesus Christ, of course we don't, once you repent um, and receive the, the direction, the word of God, um, the Bible says, uh, you know, you gladly hear. That just means that you receive and accept what the Bible is teaching. Uh, you know, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost before you're baptized. Um, that happened to Cornelius and his family, Acts chapter 10. Um, so, you know, that it, it's not a step one, step two, step three. It's a step one and then either or. Um, so, but, uh, you know, it is necessary to do both, uh, you know, or to do all three, repent, be baptized in Jesus name, and also to receive uh, the Holy Ghost, to be born again of water and of the spirit. That's what Jesus was talking about to Nicodemus. So we, we got to be baptized in water for the remission of sin and be also be baptized with the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist prophesied of Jesus, uh, how he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with the fire. And again, it is uh, essential, it is necessary uh, for you to re to do all of this. Um, you can't just pick and choose, you, you know, the Holy Ghost is not just a, an added bonus, it's not just uh, something that you can have or can have, or you know, you don't have to have, yeah, absolutely it's necessary. We see that in scripture how um, uh, Paul uh, and Peter, uh, both when they come upon different groups of people would ask them and make sure that, you know, have you received the Holy Ghost, uh, you know, since you believe, since you've been baptized, you know, in different scenarios like that. So if, uh, if they, you know, if it's just an added blessing, if it was just, you know, something you can give or take, you know, why would they want to be sure that they had received the Holy Ghost? Well, because it is necessary. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Jesus, uh, again, spoke of that being born of water and of the Spirit in John chapter 3, talking to Nicodemus. We had talked about that being born again back in a previous lesson. Uh, Paul preached about it. Uh, you know, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That's in Romans chapter 8. Um, so Peter, uh, again, talked about it, and Peter describes it in his, uh, or I'm sorry, Paul describes it as joy unspeakable and full of glory. Uh, I'm sorry, again, <laughs> Peter said that in, in that is joy unspeakable, full of glory. Paul describes it as righteousness, peace, and joy in Romans chapter 14. So uh, again, it's, uh, you know, all of these uh, are, are explaining to us that it is essential to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, how, how do you receive it? Well, the Bible tells us, uh, again, Jesus tells us we uh, uh, ask and it shall be given unto you. James says you have not because you ask not. It's not that we have to beg. It's not that we have to, uh, again, uh, Cornelius and his house were just simply receiving the priest's word that Peter was given to them and the Holy Ghost came upon them. So, uh, you know, once you repent, cleanse your heart uh, and make things right with God uh, and then just ask him uh, to receive because it is a promise. He wants to give it to you. It's not that we have to beg for it or anything like that. We just have to make sure and get our heart right with him uh, through repentance, uh, through uh, submission to him. Uh, the evidence, uh, uh, of course, uh, like I said, when, uh, well, for an example, we'll go back to Cornelius, the story in Acts chapter 10, uh, when Peter comes to and uh, is preaching the, the word to Cornelius in his house, the Holy Ghost falls upon them. Peter, also, there were some uh, Jews that had come with uh, Peter to the house of Cornelius, and those Jews understood and saw that the Holy Ghost had fallen upon Cornelius and his house, the Bible says, because they heard them speak with tongues. So we have example there. We have the example on the day of Pentecost, the first uh, outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The, all of those 120 spoke with tongues. And uh, that is the initial, and I say the initial, that's the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost. Um, now, of course, the Holy Ghost, once we receive that, the, uh, Jesus says it's going to lead and guide us into all truth. So um, we have, uh, you know, the Samaritans in Acts chapter 8, 
uh, began to speak with tongues. These are all examples of once, uh, you know, the initial evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 8, the Samaritans. Again, Acts chapter 10, Cornelius and his house, uh, the, the disciples of John the Baptist there at Ephesus in Acts chapter 19. Paul testified uh, of himself, you know, speaking in tongues in 1 Corinthians 14. So um, it, it was, you know, a re recurring theme that we see in Scripture that when the Holy Ghost falls upon them, people, different people for the first time, they speak with, with tongues, with other tongues and giving God the praise and the glory. And, and uh, that is the initial evidence that somebody has received the Holy Ghost is they speak in tongues when they receive that promise. And again, Jesus uh, tells us that we are to receive this Holy Ghost. We are to receive this promise because of the power that comes with it. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So uh, the, the Spirit gives, uh, gives us, of course, uh, when Jesus comes back, you know, he's looking for those. Uh, uh, we will receive immortality when, when Jesus returns. Uh, again, in Romans chapter 8, I believe it is, that, uh, yeah, and also 1 Corinthians 15, we will receive immortality if we have, if that same spirit that uh, uh, dwells in you that, uh, that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. So we have to have that spirit. And, and also Romans chapter 8 is a good chapter to read about the necessity of having the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, um, the Holy Spirit, whatever title you want to give it it's all the same thing but you are Romans 8 and verse 9 uh, Paul says you are not in the spirit or not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his so again you can't get much plainer than that if you don't have the spirit of Christ you don't are none of his you don't belong to him you're not a part of his church so it is necessary uh, to have uh, that spirit band. It also, like, like I said, it gives us power. And he says, uh, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. So it gives us power to testify, power to boldness, like Peter on the day of Pentecost to, to spread the gospel, to tell others about Jesus and uh, to, to, to witness for the Lord. Um, you know, without the Holy Ghost, the early disciples would have been powerless uh, to, to make a change in, their, in that hostile world that they were living in. But because they received that power of the Holy Ghost, uh, you know, the, the uh, magistrates there in Jerusalem said, you know, they testified of the disciples of Jesus said, hey, these that have turned the world upside down have come hither, hither also. So, you know, they knew, they, could, they had seen the transformation of people because of the power that these people were preaching about. So the, power, the Spirit gives power. The Spirit also teaches us. Again, uh, the Bible is not a product of, of man's mind and ability uh, again, but holy men of God, Second Peter one twenty one, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, uh, since it required inspiration of the Spirit for the writing of the of Scriptures, it also requires inspiration of the Holy Ghost to understand God's Word. He shall lead and guide you to all truth. That Spirit of Truth, Jesus was referring to. Um, so. Uh, and he also, uh, Jesus tells us in John 14, 26, um, he, Jesus promised that the Spirit would teach you all things and bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Ghost can bring things back to our remembrance, seeds that have been planted uh, before time. Uh, the Spirit can, uh, you know, gives righteousness, peace, and joy. Romans 14, we talked about that a moment ago. 14 and 7, and uh, the Spirit of God, of course, imparts the love of God. Um, so uh, Romans 5 and 5 says, The love of God is shed abroad in, in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. 
So the gift of the Holy Ghost is a baptism of the love of God, a boundless love that proceeds and comes from the Lord himself. It's a love that cries earnestly to every thirsty heart. Uh, Revelation 22, 17 says, Let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So, you know, it's, it's, it's there for everyone. The promise is unto you, to your children, and to all that are far off. So if you have not received the gift of the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues, it is necessary. And it's not nothing that you have to beg the Lord for. It's just sincerely seek after it and ask him and, and understand that, you know, you have to have it. If you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. So let that sink into you. I mean, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you have received the Holy Ghost, then, uh, you know, seek after it. Ask God for it. Pray for it. Uh, repent. That is essential, too, to receive the gift. You have to have a repentant heart. Uh, repent, you know, every and all sins, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, give it unto God and say, Lord, I'm so sorry, and ask Him to forgive you for all of those things that you have done and give it to God, uh, submit unto him and allow him to, to work and to move in your life. So because it is essential, uh, that's how God started this church and that's how he expects all of us to live by. I mean, God hasn't changed uh, plans, you know, since he established his church. It's the same plan that it's always been. It's the same plan that will be in effect until he comes back to receive his church unto his own. So we, and, and again, we have to have that spirit uh, in order to, to quicken our mortal bodies, uh, you know, when he comes back for his, for his people. So uh, I, I hope it's uh, clear to you that, you know, we, we, in order to uh, be born again, we talked about this before, but, you know, got to repent, change your life, turn it over to the Lord, stop going <clears throat> in the direction of living for yourself and start living uh, for the Lord and according to his word, uh, be baptized, totally immersed in water, calling on the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. That's a removal of your sins. And then receive the gift of the Holy Ghost uh, with the uh, initial evidence of speaking in tongues and magnifying, glorifying God in the language that you have no idea what you're saying, but God does. The angels can understand it. And, and again, that that is relinquishing control uh, uh, of your, your mouth, your tongue, and giving it to God and letting him just uh, take control of that also. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just letting God have all of you, and uh, he will, he'll take it from there. So God bless you. Uh, be blessed. Uh, look forward to next lesson. We'll be talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, the, the, how the Spirit works in and through us. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in Lesson 9. But until then, be blessed. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, hope to see you again soon.